Good morning, everyone, and a very warm welcome back, all protocols observed. I must say, this is when the, the day gets a little bit, quite a bit fun, because I think all of our voices have dropped an octave. It's day three of a superb conference. More importantly, it's the morning after the second night before. And uh, as this is the youth morning, I think the youthful spirits in the room, in addition to the younger people, made it in. The rest clearly need to have another a second wake-up call, but we thank you for participating with us today. We have a great session this morning in that we want to, like we did yesterday, have a bit of a conversation around how can we get the tourism community working more closely with the investment community so that you all achieve what is ultimately the same objective, growing tourism to be able to grow ultimately the value of the assets that you put into the tourism markets. So for that reason, we have a lovely panel of people who are going to join us. First and foremost, I'd like to please ask Dr. Hannah Mercerli from the World Bank Group to come on stage. Dr. Mercerli, who many of you met yesterday, is a real champion when it comes to development of tourism in Africa and around the world itself. She has become the, the go-to person, for lack of better words, uh, when it comes to the World Bank in terms of tourism. And you will see through her engagement this morning why so many people want a piece of Hannah. And it's not just because she has the ATM card to the bank. So ultimately, though, she's going to be providing a very valuable role in being the link between when we talk about tourism and we talk about investment, because she's on the front line of making sure that the delivery happens. Joining us as well is going to be Sapta, who is coming from Indonesia. He is the Honorable Vice Minister of Tourism and Creative Economy, which is a lovely ship. Shapna Dirwander is going to be joining us. And unfortunately, Sapta has a flight to catch to ITB a little bit into the session. So he's going to be excusing himself, but we stole him for a few minutes. We've taken away his car keys and his cell phone. So we have him until that time. And finally, but very much not least, the absolutely lovely Honorable Minister of Natural Resources and Tourism, Lazaro Nyandu from Tanzania. Thank you very much. So with that said, and conscious of time and the limited value of the resources we have in terms of the availability on stage this morning, we want to dive right into how do we ensure that when destinations are putting themselves forward in terms of tourism development and therefore investment opportunities, how do you compete? And that's why I'd love to understand from both of you, Sir Honorable Minister of Tourism and Natural Resources of Tanzania, and then from yourself, Safta, as well, from Indonesia, how do you position yourself as an investment destination? In, in Tanzania, we are positioning ourselves as a country uh, that is a conservation heaven, uh, pristine nature. Uh, it is absolutely a place that is, if, if you wanted to say, to, to visit uh, safari destination, and you wanted to go on a tarmac road, on a limousine, you may not come to Tanzania. If you wanted to really experience the absolutely experience of safari, uh, uh, as it is, you come to Tanzania, and we believe the investments are allowing that uh, to happen in, in the country. Exactly to that point, and this is where we get into the, the more um, assertive conversation. For everything that you said, Honorable Minister, why should the investment community care? For all of these beautiful natural resources and all that you offer in conservation, why should the investors care? It, it is imperative for everybody in the investment community to note that Africa has come of age, Tanzania has come of age. We have gone through enormous transformation of a country. We have uh, transformed our financial systems and the way we, uh, we treat investors. We have allowed investment uh, investors to have 100% of repatriation of their capital of their Brilliant. profit. Uh, when you invest into the country of Tanzania, for example, your investment is guaranteed, not only through our legal systems within the country, but we are also subscriber to the international laws, international norms, and uh, this allows uh, the, the, the one, the safety of investment, protection of your investment, but also we have gone the distance in terms of giving uh, incentives to the investment, five-year incentives, 10 years incentive. Those tax incentives are making our investment destination absolutely uh, very lucrative and very impressive, I think. And, and we are seeing, I think Tanzania is, is one of the leading countries in Africa today in terms of the foreign direct investment. And for those who were late to come, of course, many were awoken by the new discoveries of oil and gas in, in, in the country. 
but the traditional investment in the hotel is now catching up. And, and a lot of companies are actually scrambling to come and we welcome those. As a new tourism minister, it's my opportunity to really open doors and engage in conversation because with investors. Because the challenge is your neighbor beside you is saying, no, 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 no. Before you go to invest in Tanzania, why don't you look at Indonesia? Because we in Indonesia have not just tourism, but a creative economy. Sir, how do you position yourself and why should the investors care? I think I would like to start this uh, report has been uh, made by the uh, WTTC. Maybe everybody read this uh, beautiful Ikebebele news. That uh, there will be more and more and more visitors to Asian country. That uh, we expect was five and six and ten million people. Why? Because ASEAN is a position like, you know, the world-class destination. The ASEAN, of course, the, we are talking ASEAN in Indonesia, has reached in culture, diverse in culture. And of course, also, especially for Indonesia, we have a very unique country with the 17,000 more islands. That this, this is our position for the marine beast. It's a world-class marine beast. Mm. Uh, that and also, economically, we are among the G20. That means mm -hmm. we are trillion dollar club. Mean the even for domestic tourism, we are also positioned as a big outbound, not only inbound, so outbound position. I think that's why not only investment in how to uh, develop the destination, but also another. Uh, tourism facilities in that, that right. area. Well, it's interesting That's why uh, many of the, uh, this is, um, uh, what is uh, opportunity to the investor to, uh, to come and to invest in Indonesia. Why? Because that's the facts. We need more and more facilities, especially in hotel side. Uh, I think um, in this uh, very important meeting or uh, 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 what is called business meeting from yesterday. Mm -hmm. uh, there's many potential um, uh, new investor will come to Indonesia. I think some uh, concrete example from Carson uh, Revisitor. They have already signed some contract with the, our partner in Panorama. This is also the new uh, investment uh, concrete will come. There's about uh, 25 hotel new hotel. There's only one group, with many of groups that Indeed. come. Indeed, because you both indicated that in many ways you both have one common denominator aside yeah. from interest and growth, and clearly you're talking the language of investment dialogue, yeah. which means you get it. And yeah. you've got a fantastic Honourable Minister of Tourism yes. and Creative Economy as well, yes. who used to be in trade. You have the human migration. You have the wildebeest migration, sir. Mm. So you both offer different opportunities for growth. Mm. I would love to understand from the bank's perspective, how do you assess where the opportunity can best be leveraged for private sector investors to be able to bring these opportunities to life? It's a great question, Anita. And uh, I think in terms of the, the bank, uh, we work uh, with both Indonesia as well as Tanzania, so it's wonderful to be here to share in this conversation. Uh, in terms of looking at investment and whether it's Indonesia or Tanzania, what is so critical is, is that there is our thinking in terms of investment goes across the full value chain. And while we look obviously to see where the hotel opportunities are, we also have to be looking at the overall environment to achieve competitiveness. And in both Indonesia and Tanzania, there's commitment to more airports, more infrastructure, more policy changes to create both the business enabling environment as well as the positive investment climate. And once those pieces are in place, then the investment can happen. Indeed, fantastic. Because what I'd love to understand, and I'm conscious that you're twitching looking at your watch, what have you learned through your shifting focus to very much talking the dialogue with the investment community to build the tourism sector? What are the learnings that you've each personally had around how to be able to yield a higher degree of investment attraction and therefore benefit for tourism and the investment community? Sir. Yeah, I think uh, this is a role of the government to uh, 
improve <coughs> and also to uh, you know to facilitate them in order to really uh, has uh, more and more yield not only for the investor also for the community yes. uh, uh, some measure has been taken by the government uh, tax incentive you know uh, reducing some uh, procedure wrap tip and etc that's uh, also allow the investor uh, more suitable mm -hmm. and uh, uh, more what they call um, comfort and that's that part yes and also the community how we we doing also what we call human capital investment we try to train them and in order they have to in not only inform in the such of the investor coming in that villas or that city or that certain area of resort they really uh, share because they can also uh, invest in in working in that particular area on the resort that, okay. that can also help the community to increase not only the income their knowledge also somehow they have also the transport technology from investor coming in that that village or that resort or that hotel. It's lovely to hear yes. that in addition to developing the hard infrastructure, as <coughs> Hannah says, as the enabling environment, yeah. the soft infrastructure is also very much being brought yeah. into that's, that. That's also very important how we can also develop the human resources Absolutely. or human capital in that uh, area of tourism. That's, that's, that's I think, the successful of this investment. Fantastic. Yeah. Sir, and yourself? What have you learned through this shift and coming into the office now, relatively new, and ink is still drying on your cards, in how you need to make your, desk, your, your office deliver more assertively on tourism through working with the investment community? Uh, and at first, it, 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 is, it is really uh, awesome to, to have been here and visiting with so many different people, investors and those that are hearing for the first time of the opportunities that we have to offer. First thing I believe, very few people really know uh, that destination of Tanzania as it is. And I think we've been in the shadow over so many years that people would think Mount Kilimanjaro was in Kenya, for example. And I would, you would hear people going into Africa to see this majestic Serengeti. And everybody believed somehow it wasn't in the country of Tanzania. We are telling the story. The story is that everything that is pristine, that's amazing, is in the country of Tanzania, from Kilimanjaro to the Serengetis and all that. To me, that is the first thing. The world must come to understand those dynamics. Secondly, I told somebody yesterday, uh, Tanzania is one of those countries, you have such a long, over 200, 2,000 stretch of pristine beaches not mentioning Zanzibar and Mafia. You, you really have something that the world, first of all, need to understand the beauty Absolutely. that we got. We have the beach meet the, 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 the safari. When you go to Sadan National Park, uh, just uh, kilometers away from the airport of Dar es Salaam, you see something you will never see anywhere in the world. Now that's one. But secondly, uh, there is this very famous American uh, musician who, who said, Africa, the Lord gave you struggle and struggle made you strong. Mm -hmm. And I think we are in the, in the, in the day and age that uh, if you should invest in Tanzania, there is one thing which is clear, supply and demand economics. We, need, we have less supply and we, 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 we have more demand. Dar es Salaam city today is considered Africa's uh, highest occupancy rate of hotel in any African country. So you have the example that you have more people coming new businesses coming, business travelers as well as traditional leisure travel from Europe and elsewhere are coming in numbers. The country is relatively, not relatively, is number one safe country in Africa with a history from independence having done zero coup d'etat and people love their life and they would never take a gun to fight. And I think some of those endowments that we have are taking the, 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 the African country as an example. But one more thing. We are taking, and I'm taking these initiatives to really work together as a region. I think we are stronger when we work with Kenya, with Uganda, with Rwanda, and, and Burundi, and Tanzania is taking that lead together with Kenya, and I'm, I'm just paying a, a bilateral visit to Kenya in a couple of days to really be able to, 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 
to harness some of those opportunities that we share, some of those ecosystems like Mara Serengeti. And I think we, we are able to attract and win more when we work together as a region. And I think those are the directions that we are looking. And to that point, and, and, and just probably, I guess one, one thing that when you speak about that regional dynamic, that's one thing that ASEAN has done exceptionally well to leverage not just the international arrivals and tourism opportunity, but the regional. So you do have year-round asset utilization. Can you speak as well, and I'd love to get Hannes to, to jump in on this as well, in terms of how you find Indonesia has championed so successfully leveraging the regional opportunity that provides the investors as a result a much higher degree of guarantee of protection. How yeah. has that worked for you and how does the World Bank yeah. link to that in support? Yeah, uh, that's sorry, Anita, that's, I would like to stay, I, I'd love to stay more time because to explain this one, uh, this um, very interesting uh, subject or matters in ASEAN especially. As, uh, we are the big country in ASEAN, you know, which have 250 million people, and uh, you know, cross from east to west is a five, six hour flight. And we have many of uniqueness there. That's why uh, we are really in uh, 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 what is country who really uh, leverage all the, these, this region, this uh, ASEAN. And second thing, we are one and only for the G20. That means in terms of GDP, it's really it's number 10 or number 12 now. That means the middle class of Indonesia, no more than 100 million. Uh, that's, that, of course, this is need or maybe they start from already from the basic need in tourism to lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Because everybody likes to be a uh, to laser, to laser, to to visit one destination, even in Tanzania. Absolutely. Yeah, this why because they have the money now. They hundred million people. Uh, I would like to touch this or uh, the final uh, uh, statement from us. Um, I have a we have a booth here. We for the investor we offer you there is about fourteen the potential investment in Indonesia from many of. Uh, variety of destination. One thing I just want to mention, we have what we call the bonus. You, you can imagine serving only just happen in, on the sea. But in Indonesia, there's only three countries have serving on the river. You can see this is serving area for six until 10 kilometers, you can roll and roll in the river. This is a very unique one. You can imagine if you build up a co-tourism hotel there, and that can be fantastic. Mm. So the diversity yeah. is definitely Diversity. There. And of course, in so, so lake, mountain, everything, that can be also, uh, uh, can welcome also investors to that. Uh, I think there is Putin in, the, in this uh, hotel forum, there's Putin offer that's ready to, to, what is, to welcoming the investor to Indonesia. Fantastic. And it's uh, something you really have, in yeah. the ASEAN region particularly, yes. been a champion when it comes to being a progressive economy with yes. the right energy and with the right invitation in terms of incentivization, yeah. diversity of offering. Diversity, yes. In terms of also the facilities and uh, visa, even visa facilities has Indeed. been agreed by the ASEAN country, as also has been in the G20, has been also agreed by our, uh, our uh, leader that have, we have to more, to give the more, uh, facilita, facilita, oh, no, visa facilitation for among the ASEAN country. I think this is also important because this ASEAN also growing, ASEAN also now economically also uh, faster growing than things. This is potential market for, for international. Great. Well, on that, and I know that the Honourable yeah. Minister of Tourism and Natural Resources from Tanzania is getting a little excited because now he knows he's got full attention. <laughs> We're going to have to very quickly, unfortunately, say goodbye to Sapta. Yes. And thank you very much for joining us. Good to Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Hannah. Thank you, Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. See you again. Yeah. See you again. Yeah. Fantastic. Ah. There we go. No, he so wants to get a little cozy in this conversation. There we go. There we go. <laughs> if I could respond to your, your earlier uh, comment regarding uh, the regional approach. Um, in both the case of, of Indonesia and, and Tanzania, we have an opportunity where the neighborhood is the right neighborhood, if you will. And in that regard, uh, the bank works to support projects that enable regional integration, so bringing these uh, various uh, groups together. 
what's important though is, is that we can be thinking about the mindset of the government and the mindset of investors. And it's within that context that the best investment can happen and fostering that over time is, <coughs> is critical. And what we see is, is that there is a kind of creative tension, and I think I'm sure the minister already experiences this now, with the, the pressure for short-term results, but within an environment of continuity and, and assurance that the actual uh, development and investments will take place over time. And that short-term pressure for results, but that long-term orientation around results and also relationships is what really brings together destinations such as Tanzania and Indonesia to be attractive for investment. Indeed. And this, this is where the World Bank provides such a valuable resource to this community because you can see those connections of opportunity. Indeed. You know what's happening in the neighborhood that the Honorable Minister might not be able to know because the Honorable Minister of Tourism from Kenya is not going to tell him. So it's, it's keeping <laughs> it's that... It's all about competition, <laughs> competitiveness, indeed. Exactly, and that's, it's, it's healthy. But I think that that regional and that that the holistic connections that you were able to make allow the connections to be much stronger for the investors itself. When you look at how, for instance, Tanzania and the World Bank has worked together so effectively in creating a real partnership for growth, what are some of the mistakes as a result that you find other countries make in just simply not approaching it the right way through the right people with the right proposition? And to both of you, please, to answer. Do you want to go first? Or? Um, the, the, I, I think on, on the part of Tanzania, we are like Mackenzie Group in, in, in the UK uh, brought in the report. We actually rely on the move. We, we are a country that is appreciating everything that growth brings. Uh, we, uh, we, we are a young country and, and I see we are also a very interesting country in terms of, of diverse uh, of all the opportunities we have. Uh, for the past four years running, uh, Tanzania has hosted a resort that has been considered number one in the world. I'm talking about Indonesia, here in, here in, uh, in, in Germany, in America, all over the world. It was voted number one beautiful resort in the world. This is the Gourmet Reserve. Um, we also would have uh, some of those uh, dynamics. So we, we, we have that in yes. the world and we have not very much, but the general point is if you compare with Kenya, which is our beautiful next door neighbor, the Kenyan coast, Malindi, uh, Mombasa, uh, has more hotels than those in Tanzania combined. I also made calculations for the hotels that were based in the city of Nairobi, where almost in terms of their bed capacity more than the ones that were in the entire country combined. I also made a calculation. We have Maasai, Mara, and the Serengeti, which is two-thirds of the Mara. We had more hotels in the Mara, like 10 times of the Serengeti. So we have an opportunity for any serious investor to really jump ship, because Tanzania is the next boy or girl in town mm -hmm. uh, with opportunities that are real, tangible. It is fairly expensive destination than our neighbors, but the returns on investment are considered much more higher, much more quicker, because supply and demand economics really gives you that opportunity. But, five, but, but the, the one, one other thing I wanted to mention, uh, the, the story of Tanzania is not, is not very much known. I mentioned the other day that we host the second <coughs> deepest lake in the world, uh, in the Lake Tanganyika. And I'm working with Zambia, for example, mm -hmm. in Congo, mm -hmm. to see yeah. how, we can, how we can work together in that pristine resource. It's a beautiful uh, water. It's an incredible place. And, and, and with, with everything that we are doing in terms of the re reviving the central rail system that will now save the Congos, the DRC Congo, uh, Rwanda and Burundi, and these other countries, you have the economic corridors that are making economic sense for investors. And we believe that as soon as we are able to harness the regional cooperation and the travel in terms of aviation uh, industry, we, we should be able to become the, the, the really best investment destination for the hotel now in, 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 in East Africa. And I think given the fact that we have the most that people might want to come and see, and as I mentioned earlier, I'm interested personally to see that we can open the, 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 the route from Nairobi to Mara to Serengeti and to Ngorongoro. 
that will allow hundreds of thousands of people traffic to be able to visit those places is absolutely great new investment area. But the city of Dar es Salaam now considered to be the fastest growing city in Africa. Mm -hmm. If you were there in the past three years, four years, it's going to be a completely different city. I don't know what is happening, but it is absolutely a miracle. And we see the dynamics of the need for, for business class hotels, medium class Brilliant. hotels. And this will be something that investors will have to, th to and think and consider seriously. It's a lovely reflection of the continental opportunity. Yeah. And so when people, because Africa is still relatively, as you know, unknown. And so even travelers, when they come, they want to visit, they want to visit multiple countries in the region. And you're offering another proposition. And I also believe, as we get into the wrap up and I'll ask Kana a last question, I believe you have a particularly special invitation to this audience as well, to not just hear what you have to say about Tanzania, but to next year come and see Tanzania. Can you share that, please? 2015, and, and specifically 2015 in September, Tanzania will, will host the African Hotel Investment Forum for the first time. Very good news. I so, am. See you all I, there. <laughs> I, I am going to be, my, my wife loves to play host when girls want to go to Zanzibar. And if you love Zanzibar, you're going to have my, my, my wife and so many ladies who are crazy about Zanzibar. But for guys who really want to go rugged and, and be able to visit the Serengetis, the Selu. And by the way, Selu Game Reserve is the largest single game reserve anywhere in the world. It is the size of the entire country of Belgium. I keep saying this <laughs> to remind people how big it Indeed. is. Uh, we, we have some of these ab absolutely unheard uh, uh, destinations that people are now discovering. And, and a few people come, and, and I just heard from the BBC World that they want to, the hard talk, want to visit Selu <laughs> and be able to see how hard it is after my interview in London. Brilliant. But, but what I want to say is that we will be opening up our doors uh, for not only leisure, but serious investment around Mount Kilimanjaro and around the city of Da, the city of Arusha, and, and our, destined, our beautiful national park systems. We are opening up Mafia Island, which is also a competition to Zanzibar. The only difference is for the, I, I saw numbers, for the water sport lovers, uh, there will be no better place than Mafia because there isn't anything that is happening. So I'm building, uh, refurbishing the airport, and we are able to have people come in a couple of few minutes from Dar es Salaam. So we look forward Brilliant. to welcome the world to Tanzania. We look forward to having a conversation. We look forward, and this is very important, to make it very easy for investors to, to, to come and do business in Tanzania. Brilliant. And before the last question to Hannah, sorry, if you want to I, jump I was in. going to answer your, your earlier question on, on errors and, and uh, lessons that can be learned in effect. And we, we don't see so much errors, but, but investment and growing tourism sectors is something that is organic and happens over time. And so there's continuous learning as it relates to both creating that investment uh, offering, but then also building upon it over time to make sure that investors want to continue to invest. And I, and I wanted to make a quick point. Um, we worked with the French government, and obviously we're working with the Germans and so many other governments around the world, about improving our hospitality uh, education. I spoke when I was here with the representative of Cornell and some other <coughs> hospitality uh, training. We, we are gearing to improve that hospitality uh, education and training and language skills. Uh, and, and I think you, you will be finding a very robust human resource. I'm also working with the neighbors to make sure when I have deficit, I can be able to tap from whoever that has the surplus in terms of human resource. So this is something that we, we will be working collaboratively and we are opening up the doors for, expa for expertise and ex expatriates uh, who might come with brands uh, when they so choose to invest in, in, in our country. Brilliant, excellent. I've just been given our signal that unfortunately our time is, is coming to a close. Uh, but what's lovely to see as well is that, and I believe when, it, when you signed the deal with Bench Events and with Questex for 2015, that you challenged Jonathan Worsley to a race up Kilimanjaro? Oh. I think that oh. was the condition I of... <laughs> I forgot that. Uh, Jonathan and... Who's left the room, so we guys. can all agree yeah. with it. Gonna be climbing Kilimanjaro, so anybody who wanna join that, I will be there to flag them off. I'm not sure whether I'm going to climb because my wife has done that for me. You uh, can't delegate climbing. She did it. Uh, but, 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 yeah, yeah. Indeed. 
you know, in Africa, <laughs> when, when, when mama does something, you don't want to repeat. <laughs> but, but the Wise point is, yeah, yeah, it will be a pleasure to have more of you uh, try to climb. And it's, it's a beautiful experience that goes to your CV. There, there we go. go, there we go. <laughs> Brilliant. Well, please join me in thanking very much our great guides for development in Africa. And to you both, thank you enormously.